Hi guys, welcome back to another episode. This video we are sharing with you what watermaker we decided to choose for our new boat. Um, for those of you who have never seen our videos or don't know who I am, I'm Sarah from Sailing Catalpa and we have lived on a boat since 2016. We feel it's super important if you're going to go cruising full time and traveling uh, to have a watermaker and that's just our opinion but um, I'm gonna share with you in this episode what watermaker we chose and why and it's pretty much just showing you what the watermaker is and why nothing else there's no installation so we hope you enjoy I'm gonna hand it over to Lee if you haven't already guys please subscribe thanks for watching let's go see what watermaker we chose subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. What do we have in the box this morning? We have a Seawater Pro water maker. This little water maker is awesome. There's a few cool little features on this. There's a number of models to choose from. We chose the AC model. So depending on your power resources and what you have available, it might not be the option for you. There are 12 volt options, but for us, we don't want to be limited on water. So 40 gallons an hour, 150 litres an hour, that's what we're after. High output. I'm guessing by the feel of this one that uh, this is probably our AC motor. Right, so we've got Dakota lithium batteries now. Um, we've got an 800 amp hour system with plenty of solar, nearly two kilowatts of solar. We've got, we haven't tried yet, obviously, it's in the box still, but our intentions are to run off our solar and run off our lithium bank through an inverter. Uh, if it doesn't work for us, we'll resort back to running the generator when we make water, which we don't have at the moment. But if we have to go down that path, we will, because we still want the high output, uh, 100, uh, 40, 150 litres an hour, 40 gallons. We love our water. This is our 110, 220, 60 hertz motor. This vessel we're putting it in is 110. There is an option for a 220 European model, um, but for us, this is the one we'll be using. Either a single phase or a three phase, depends how you wire this one up. That's our starting point. There's our AC motor. Let's start on the next box. Oh, oh, oh ladies and gentlemen, what's in the box? All right, so this is what's in the box. Mike's the owner of Seawater Pro. If you know anyone that's installed one of these Seawater Pro units or had anything to do with this, the first thing they'll say is Mike's an awesome guy and he's really helpful. If you have any questions or anything about your install, he's the man that's gonna answer the call and talk to you and get any specific needs for your install. This is just all stock items, what we have. So I didn't try and modify anything, like you could modify hose lengths and all that and he can make them up to specific sizes if needed. Our install is going to be in our mechanical space. So the original water maker in this boat spread out over the whole boat. I'm going to keep it all in the one room. Fingers crossed it all goes right with lengths of hoses and that. I'm not doing any long runs and putting membranes up the front of the boat and pumps down the back and so on and so forth. So. What's in the box is what we've got to work with. Fingers crossed that works, it should do. Otherwise, uh, it's, it's not a big problem to sort out any extra lengths. So we've got a coil of low pressure hose. We've got high pressure hoses by the look of it. More low pressure brine hoses and oh, one of the many features with Mike's uh, Seawater Pro units is uh stuff like this this is uh automatic wash it's just a battery in here pretty simple proprietary parts something fails they're all available i think on amazon the reason why we have chosen this specific water maker uh, once i lay this out on the table you'll see it. it's very simple it's not rocket science making water it's pretty much just a uh, well in our case an electric driven high pressure water pump running through a membrane and running into your tank with a few valves and in between. So you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want with making water. In this case, for us cruising, this one I feel has got a few extra features that's gonna be really beneficial to us as opposed to our previous water maker. This looks like one of three filters. First one, 
So that'll be a carbon filter. So you definitely need, if you're flushing your unit, a carbon filter, especially if you're using town water, which is if you've been at the marina and you've filled your tank up with town water and you go to flush uh, your water maker out, you're gonna be flushing chlorine and whatever chemicals they put in your town water through your membrane. And you don't wanna damage your membrane, guys. It's so probably not the best thing to do. All right, so this will be two more pre-filters. There will be a five and a 20, I think. Yep, a five and a 20 micron. 20 micron will get most of the debris out, followed by a five. So the idea of running the 20 pre, uh, prior to the five is you can flush these out, clean them, and get a lot longer use out of a five. Some water makers only just have a five. Uh, this has got the 20 before that one. And then there should be a sea strainer in here on the shooting couple of different options with your pressure pumps so that's our high pressure water pump these come in a stainless steel option but at the end of the day the insides are still the same so option is yours if you want to spend a few more dollars on the stainless steel one by all means go for it I love installing new stuff as opposed to playing with old stuff <laughs> always works out better almost all the time He's done a good job of bloody packaging this, guys. Look at that. Isn't she a beauty? Or well, from this side it is anyway. <laughs> Comes in obviously different colours depending on your decor, what you want to choose. But there's an awesome feature on here and that's this one here. So this valve that Mike has actually designed himself. You all know our previous Rain Man that we had. I'll go into more detail when we do the install and I'll show you, but just in a nutshell, this is a different valve to our Rain Man one we had. So this needs to be set once. Obviously I'll keep an eye on it and make sure it's, it's within range every now and then I'll check on it. At the end of the day, you wind this up once and then turn that on turn that off and that's making water. So in our old water maker, we used to have to slowly bring it up to pressure and then get it to where we want it to be. And then at the end of, when we're finished making water, back the pressure off. So this is just to me, a simpler way of doing it. Not only as it, is it simpler, but we make water underway. And we've a number of times as the boat heals, depending on where your seawater intake is, you'll suck air air and the water maker don't go well together so if you do suck air through your system through the um, high pressure pump and then force it into your membranes um, with a huge amount of pressure you can actually damage the membranes themselves or blow your housing apart so a little more talk on the membranes on this when we get there but just for simplicity for us, I can get the kids or Sarah or myself and it's time to make water. Water maker on, that's it, we're making water. Water maker off, finished. Our old water maker, you turn, turn it on, slowly bring it up to pressure. When you finish, slowly back it off. If you got any air in the system, you'll hear shuddering and whatnot going on. This is actually spring loaded. It's different to what the original needle valves are on a lot of water makers. So this takes up for the hydraulic shock that will occur in the membrane if you do get air through your system. This little guy here is sort of one of the main reasons that sold me on this system. Um, we've got our TDS monitor so we can monitor the salinity of our water. We've got our boost pump pressure. Yeah, there's our boost pump switch and our main pump switch. So, and our flow rate. So I'll go into more detail when we install this, but yeah, this was the key item for us. I love that concept and that's um, Mike's patented design. So A, simplicity of use, get any of the family to turn it on. You don't have to go through explaining pressures and worry about all that side of it. Water maker on, water maker off. To me, that's awesome because we're going to make water every day. We're using our lithium bank, so we're not going to run the thing for four or five hours and fill the tanks. 
we'll try and run it for an hour a day um, and try and manage our power that way. So B, if we do get any air in the system, which I'm sure we're going to be sailing at some stage making water because we're always running out of water. And again, that's why we've gone with the big water maker um, and we do get air in our system. The spring loaded unit here is gonna protect our membranes, which I haven't pulled out of the box yet. So as we spoke about the a valve, the spring-loaded valve as opposed to the needle valve on a lot of other water makers. You can notice these housings, they're reinforced at the end with four bolts that hold the membranes together. Um, I'm gonna shoot you over to Mike and we're gonna tell you exactly why they're actually better than some of the competitors out there. Uh, and it also absorbs hydraulic shocks. A hydraulic shock is when your boat uh, tilts over to the side or you go over a wave and you you gobble up a pocket of air. What happens is the pocket of air travels down the membrane. And when it reaches the pressure regulator, it changes speed. It goes from whatever, 10 miles an hour to 150 miles an hour, which is fine. The problem is right behind this air pocket comes what? A wall of water that's now traveling at 150 miles an hour. Slams on the pressure regulator. And if you don't have a needle valve, if you have a needle valve, I'm sorry, and you don't have the spring-loaded automatic pressure regulator, you're going to damage either your hose, your membrane inside, or you're going to crack your membrane housing. I have pictures of cracked membrane housings, and that's why we don't use the cheap Chinese membrane housings. That's why we use these stainless rods on the outside. We went away from the old Chinese uh, fiberglass because they ended up cracking. We had a few failures and we discontinued use of those so if you see a water maker out there that has white fiberglass housings uh if the ones that uh the, the ones that i've seen they will eventually fail please be aware uh these also these long rods act as springs in case of a hydraulic shock these will actually you will notice a gap here when you put the system under pressure this gap is from flexing of these rods. These rods flex intentionally to absorb hydraulic shocks. If you have a residential system, you don't need to worry about hydraulic shocks. You're, you're not gonna be jumping over waves. If this system is in your boat, you do. Believe me, we've seen those. And we, we've, worked, uh, we've worked out this problem, so it, you will not have a problem with uh, hydraulic shocks if you buy a Seawater Pro system. This is really just an unboxing. I'm gonna go into more detail when we get closer to the install. I'm still waiting on one more part to get delivered, which is our um, boost pump. And I'll double check all of our line sizes and lengths. Uh, we should be good to go. Okay, everybody, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned and we'll see you next time for the install. Thanks, guys.